landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we navigate this strange, cryptid-filled world. Join me on the quest for truth through the strange, mysterious, and supernatural. This is Planet 412. And welcome to our Supernatural Town Hall session, everybody. We are one man down. Um, Drew is taking care of some family business, so he may not be here tonight or most likely will not be. Um, and, you know, we wish him and his family well, whatever is going on. But we just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you for, for all those who are showing up to yet another uh, week of our town hall sen uh, uh, session. Uh, of course, you know Rai Voss from Codegas. You got the one half of Sasquatchers, JC, and myself from, from uh, Planet 412. Hello to everybody in the chat. Karen Root, Glenn, uh, Numa462, Audacious Amber, Susie, uh, and Truth Walker. Uh, I see my wife Stacy jumped in there. Hello, honey. Uh, yeah, so Truth Walker, formerly uh, ND Southpaw. It, oh, oh. oh, that's right. Oh, my God. I didn't see that there. Hi, Tammy. That, I like that name. It's actually really cool. It suits Tammy perfectly. Very I'm, nice. I'm curious what uh, ND Southpaw, like North Dakota Southpaw, maybe she was a boxer as well. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> me before. I'll let her tell you in the chat. Okay. Um, we just wanted to let everybody know, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, obviously, if you saw the uh, advertisement this week for the town hall session, any of you who are old enough to know about the, the show The Simpsons, um, you know about the huge history of, you know, events that have occurred that have ended up coming true years later at times. So mm -hmm. we're going to delve into that. Um, before we start, I just wanted to let everybody know, as I've been saying lately, any funds uh, that are made off of anything that I do will go to uh, bettering Planet 412 and getting some new equipment. I actually have some new equipment uh, at the end of the month that I'm going to be able to get finally because of the help that generous people have sent. Um, so, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for that. Got some other new, uh, things coming up really soon for, for my channel. Uh, JC, did you want to say anything that's going on with Sasquatchers? Yeah, as always, uh, you can find us on YouTube at Sasquatchers. Um, we have a lot of stuff coming up, you know, besides our normal weekly show, we have far out folklore, which comes out once a week, 12 PM Eastern time on Fridays, which is fun little couple minute videos about folklore from around the world check check out our uh documentary that we did on the melon heads back in january it's a fun watch i think it's about 45 minutes and stay tuned for more we're kind of rebranding a little bit um i'm not going to give anything away but you should be seeing it soon it's going to be fun well you you have put some stuff out already though uh you've been calling for something do you want to say anything about that I mean, wait, what? I, I I I saw some calls, uh, casting calls, kind of thing. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> You're like, yeah. So, what? <laughs> yeah, I was Don't like, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. We so we have a we're we're trying something different that I'm not sure has been tried before. Um, it's a it's a game show, basically a, a paranormal game show, where we're gonna have some guests on, do some trivia. Um, you know, just kind of have fun in, in the format of like a game show. So it's coming. Sounds awesome. Sounds fun to me. I think that's cool. Right? I think that's really cool. What's going on with, uh, Codegas? Uh, well, um, I have some, you know, I, I usually keep my videos and my interviews around the one hour mark, right? And, a, a one hour, maybe a little bit more, but I've been getting a, a lot of people, um, uh, with much shorter, um, experiences and I don't want to like push them away. So I'm going to start introducing like a shorter segments. That's only for, uh, YouTube. It's not going to be for, um, uh, like my podcast that I throw out, um, like on the, oh my gosh, 
Spotify or uh, or anything like that or Apple. So I'm going to have much shorter segments. Maybe, you know, it might be pushing like a half hour. And it's just going to be people who've had, uh, you know, short encounters. And, and we're just going to jump into it and go with that. And then this week here, I'm going to be releasing my L.A. Marzulli interview that I did uh, about a month ago there. So um, the, the audio has dropped, but the video course is always dropping on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. That sounds phenomenal. Uh, and and you, Matt? I actually, as I, I alluded to a tiny bit, because I wanted you guys to be able to uh, speak, I have some uh, new videos coming out this week. Um, I'm going to be working extremely hard to uh, get things taken care of in the funds department, hopefully in the next coming weeks. And they will, the, the number one goal for me is I have the microphone once the end of the month hit. Uh, I have uh, the microphone taken care of. The number one goal, though, is the computer that I need. That will fix everything. And I'm starting to climb a tiny bit. So hopefully I can get there. Uh, just to let everybody know that I do have a Patreon uh, as well uh, as the normal memberships at YouTube. So please join the Patreon. There's some special perks that you'll get. I'm getting ready very soon to start a... Uh, merchandise store so when and this is not one of them obviously i didn't want to like make this <laughs> my brother lives in long beach he got me this but i was just saying like you know merchandise the shirt those are going to be coming and for people like that are joining patreon you'll get a free t-shirt and membership uh you if you're at the top here you also will get a t-shirt coming up when i get it going so just wanted to let you guys know that um, but without further ado, um, is there someone who would like to start tonight? I would think JC is always well versed. Uh, <clears throat> JC, do you want to lead this one or? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know about lead, but I'll I'll lead the intro. You'll take the here. lead. You'll take the lead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe jumping the gun a little bit here because there's quite a few predictions that the yeah, right. uh, Simpsons yeah, right. has. Well, done, why, why don't we talk about that and say, you know, like, uh, what is the, the number that we kind of sitting at? I mean, there's upwards of like 30 at least. Yeah, I heard I, I heard 35. I was looking at today. Sorry, yeah. right? I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. no, no worries. No worries. I mean, I, I'm, we could start off from like a high level, I guess, like, you know, things like um like Trump's presidency, mm -hmm. correctly predicting Super Bowls. Yep. Uh, and you know some other ones like uh if you watched the smart watchers episode which was like a lisa's wedding episode where she talks about the voice recognition coming out like all the way back in 2013 before we really kind of had that technology in our phones mm -hmm. um there's an episode from the 90s where there's the autocorrect and they have um what was it called? The Apple Newton. If anybody remembers remembers the Apple Newton, yeah, which was like Apple's one of the very first attempts at like a, I mean, what the iPad eventually turned into, right? It was a, a smart PDA kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to touch on this kind of outside the realm of predictions and more so along the lines of the creator of The Simpsons, Matt Groening. And his ability to predict future events, right? So mm -hmm. there's a there's a theory that Matt Groening has was linked to predictive programming, um, being a member of the Freemasons, and having access to this kind of information. So this intimate knowledge of you know human past, future, present kind of thing. And I don't is, is there any is there evidence that Matt Groening is actually a Freemason? I don't know. <laughs> I kind of looked around. I didn't find anything. I mean, it's not like a database where you can just look up Freemasons, right? True. You know, you might find our names on there if you look hard enough. <laughs> but <laughs> not mine. You won't see me on there. Um, but uh, they don't let me in there. I Here's one right mention. here. Um, the Simpsons, when it's good, a keen reflection. Uh, it says... Its series creator Matt Groening is a Freemason who's subtly playing uh, some of the characters. It says on IMDb that he is. So, 
I mean, that's well, kind of a reputable. I, I think that's a little bit of reputable for. Oh, here's another one on LinkedIn. Matt Groening <laughs> as a Freemason, bless you, as a Freemason, or has a direct connection uh, with the organization. Yeah. So Numa four sixty two as Freemasonry. Are they a cult? Um, I don't think that the lower level Freemason people are part of any kind of cult. Like your your brother I, and your uncle who are Freemasons, I think are harmless. Ultimately. Yeah, like at least at that level. I, I do level. think. I think it is a recruitment kind of thing where it's like they bring these people in, and this is at the the subpar level. And you don't know, like, even if you reach the ceiling in that one, you don't know, but they will, they're like watching you. They're like, yep, this one. And then they'll pluck you out and move you into, you know, into the remedial, I don't know, into like the advanced class, the advanced uh, Freemasons. Right. Like Joe Schmo down the street, who's been in Freemasonry since he graduated from high school, probably isn't. Probably isn't part of the grander scheme, but to say that Freemasonry hasn't had a play in some large choices that have guided society and certain countries, especially the United States. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of Freemason imagery involved in the founding of the United States. And fun fact, if you are Roman Catholic, you can be excommunicated for being a Freemason. You is cannot. That right? That is true. It is wow. in, it's in the catechism of the Catholic church. You are not allowed to be a Freemason. Wow. Wow. I did not now, know that. I've never heard of that my whole life being in Catholic school from preschool through high school. Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, now, now, here's the thing as well. This is, I've heard someone talk about the play on words of Freemason, and this kind of ties in a bit with Tartaria um, and the mud floods, oh, is that yes. Freemasons were created because they actually were the ones who discovered these buildings and it was Freemasonry, you know, like they discovered these buildings. So that was uh, my interview with Sean Hibbler there that uh, um, he alluded to that. It's not, you know, it, it's, it's just something out there to just to, you know, to chew on. Yeah. And just, and just for evidentiary purposes, 1983 CDF is of the Catholic catechism states that, Anyone who is enrolled in a Masonic association is in a state of grave sin and may not receive communion. Okay. Wow. All right. That's that is very interesting. Um, I just wanted to comment as well, you know, the, the rumors not only of him being, you know, in the Freemasonry uh, kind of, you know, ox out there, um, but, you know, I personally think one of two things or it could be both i think that he is either a time traveler or he mm -hmm. has access to someone <laughs> or some being that has been able to give him you know future events i i think we've reached that level of just coincidence and past you know there's too many things that have occurred to be that's just coincidence. That's just, nah, that's just a quick. When you've got, like, I've got one thing up here on my phone. I was looking at the one you were, JC, because I knew it was the one I was, the 30. But I'm looking at one here. It has 35. So you've got 35 different events that have come true. Yeah. That's, that's so much more than coincidence. Now, yeah. Now, I, I have a, a guy who did a study, if you guys want to hear this about this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, his name is uh, uh, Matt Zarmensky, and he's an assistant math professor at the University of Albany. And he had a few things to say about the show. It says, during the Simpsons Golden Age um, and the remainder of the first 12 seasons, there was an average of 8.54 jokes per minute. Okay, so every minute, 8.54 jokes. According to a study Zermeski conducted after the show's 29th season, he determined that the show can, um, if the show continued at that same rate, then it contained roughly 120,000 jokes. And by that calculation, over 1.2 thousand of those jokes were future predictions. Okay, so wow. as mentioned above, viewers commonly so viewers commonly believe that there is anywhere between twelve to like thirty-five accurate predictions. However, 
Zarmensky's study determined that 1,224 predictions were made. Um, it was done, bef- uh, and this was done before seasons 30 and 33. Uh, but assuming the jokes have still come at the same rate, that means the Simpsons have a roughly 1.6% rate of success in simple terms. The study shows that there's less than two out of every 100 predictions have come true. Wow, very interesting. Yeah, so like it, it's it's mathematics, you know, like which is statistics is showing you that, yeah, they're, they're hitting, they're hitting this, you know. Um, now, as to how they're hitting that, uh, I, I agree with you, Matt, you know, is it, now, here, here's another possibility is, is, is it some sort of scrying of sorts, you know, are you scrying or is it some sort of mediumship, psychic ability as well, you know, to see into the future? Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. I've, or is he a time traveler and are some of these things, you know, is he foreseeing the future or traveling a little bit ahead in the future, seeing things and then writing about it or like myself, is he a dreamer? Does he dream? A projector. Is he projecting himself? Mm-hmm. Is he yeah. is he dreaming this at night? Dreaming these without actually knowing, getting his ideas subconsciously, getting his ideas and writing them in. So is this all subconscious? Which that I am buying into. I'm more into the subconscious uh, aspect of it. Um, what do you? What about you, JC? I don't know. I'm just going to leave just, (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know him personally. Um, I've enjoyed the Simpsons. I mean, I'm not like a huge Simpsons fan. Some people really love the Simpsons. Uh, It's something I grew up on, you know, but it never really, I don't know. It never really resonated. Like after I grew old enough and I started watching different shows, it never really resonated with me. And it didn't resonate with me like South Park did or, or something like that, you know, the humor. And that's not to say that the I, I think the original Simpsons, the the old school Simpsons up until the first movie was mm-hmm. the best Simpsons. And I think everything after that's just been not as tra- good. Trash. I agree, not as good. There's some good ones once in a blue moon for me. But I agree. For the most part, those older ones were a step above of right. all the like, The first like five seasons of The Simpsons is undoubtedly ca- classic cartoon you know, adult cartoon television. Right. And it was something that was on, it was like 6 PM. So it's not, this wasn't something that was on like one in the morning. This was available to everybody who had, I mean, not even just cable, right. Cause it originally aired on Fox, if I'm not mistaken, or it was one of the over, over the air channels. So mm-hmm. you didn't have yeah. to just have cable to see the Simpsons. You could watch it, you know, over the air on peasant. Um, vision, like I had. Yeah. So I, I saw a few comments, well, quite a few comments back. At, uh, Abigail Wilson said that uh, apparently the Simpsons had predicted P. Diddy's arrest. Um, really? So I kind of I, I did a quick search, and it's all there's a lot of stuff on TikTok. I don't have TikTok. I am very anti-TikTok and have been for years. Um, so if anybody in the chat has TikTok and has seen anything about about the P Diddy arrest and that relating su- says supposedly predicted P Diddy's arrest. Um, make sure you say something about that in the chat so we can talk about it. Yeah, please. I, haven't, I haven't seen the TikToks. I haven't seen the evidence. It, it looks like it's from one of the newer episodes. Um, now, now when, when we talk about predictive stuff, like when we're talking about devices and, and things like that, I'm, I'm a little more on the, the fence of that, like saying, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm more on the fence of like saying, isn't it just an imagination to create something? You know, like like if we want to go back, let's take a look at Star Trek. You know, Star Trek is the mother, in my opinion, um, the mother of all of technological creations. You know, like like screens. You know, view screens where you're talking to people. You know, um, you know, face to face like that. You know, they had the the tablets and everything like that. Oh. That's P. Diddy getting arrested. <laughs> All right. That was getting a little loud. I had to mute that. I had to mute that. That was a little loud. But uh, uh, yeah, that was awesome. But yeah, so I, I think that's almost a, a sense of creationism. You know, it's like you, well, not, I'm not talking about like, like Christianity with creationism like that, but I mean, like you are creating things in your mind. You're like, well, maybe this will be really cool. And that's the, 
that that is the framework for creating new technology is imagining things and then you know just drawing them up and say this would be cool and then you know making it happen is another thing so i those ones i want to push off to the side it's not that i don't believe they're amazing or awesome i think they are but it's the actual predictions of things happening like the the 911 twin towers now yeah now i was going to just bring that up in a little bit too yeah now here's a question is it confirmation bias that we're accepting these like this 911 one you know like after the fact is it confirmation <laughs> bias that's kind of like oh yeah look at this Th this this means this when you know i don't know w what do you what do you guys think about that that is it just like are we just trying to placate ourselves uh with these and say that well yes that's what that means but it, was it you know i don't know i mean it, it not but not necessarily the simpsons here because this is a different tv series but didn't the lone gunman supposedly predict uh mm -hmm. the, the twin towers incident on 9 11 i think so um because the lone gunman was an x-files split off yeah was, yeah yeah sir sorry spin off not a split off spin off and i think it, it, it lasted like one season maybe Maybe two. It, it didn't last one very season. long. One season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was, I, I think the, the pilot episode was the one that had like um, the government plotting to crash planes into the Twin Towers to start a war at the Middle East. That was like the storyline of the pilot episode of that show. Now, if you look at the, if you, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Um, if you look at the, the, the socio political, uh environment of that time period like middle eastern terrorists were the big thing right even before 9 11 you go go the whole way back even to the cold war middle eastern terrorists were a thing you know russia who's arming who afghanistan russia giving weapons so <laughs> iran contra mm -hmm. yeah iran contra i mean yeah. To, to say for me to say that the lone gunman 100 predicted i mean to pick out the twin towers okay that's fair right like that's that's a little weird but they were also like nowadays we all say oh the twin towers were the bastion of freedom in america right on the skyline in new york like that was an important part of the skyline now was that always the case did were, were the twin towers always treated that same way that like no. oh, look how beautiful they were and it's great that they were there but then look at the time that we've had since 9 11 now that we have one world trade center there right yep. and no one's flown a plane into it yet yet right then god forbid they please, ever please yeah please don't please don't let me be right. predicting that yeah, right now before we go don't, way off, don't let I me go into 9, 9 11 though. yeah I, I think any plane that would and i don't think it would ever if they'd get that far they would shoot the plane down before that would happen um i don't think anyone's going to take a plane over again i think that it's set a certain way now with security and the way the doors are barred and all that i would hope um but you know well, I, 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 go ahead I was just gonna say, well, prior to 9 11 with the Twin Towers, there was already the bombing in the 80s, right? In, in, in the bay, in the parking lot garage. That was in the, the 90s, I think. 90s, yeah. okay, in the 90s. Um, they had the bombings in the, the parking garage that was underneath the trade center. So there'd already been terrorist attacks on the trade centers. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Th th there was now. Now, if we really want to go, you know, we can, you can hit the Operation Northwoods if you know what that is. Nineteen ninety-three. Nineteen ninety-three. Okay. okay. Yeah. I know Northwoods, Michigan. No, so Operation Northwoods <laughs> was when Kennedy was president, and it was uh, presented as a way to um, attack and invade Cuba. Was terrorist attacks by Cuban terrorists. On American soil, and one of those was using a plane and crashing it into, I believe, but that's it could have been the um, the Empire State Building, but I'm not sure which one. But that that was already a thing. This Operation Northwoods was already a thing of crashing airplanes by terrorists into buildings as a form of attack to to go around. So this was back what I don't know, 50s, 60s. 
I mean, it's a it's a good mode of attack, right? It's a plane. Like, how do you stop it short of shooting it down? You shoot a plane down in New York, you're going to kill. And, and I'm not lessening the tragedy that happened on 9-11, but you shoot a plane down in New York City. Yeah. It's going to be pretty bad, too, right? Get there. I, I really don't. I think of a plane as, as hijacked again, again, God forbid, and it's headed towards a, a big city. I, I don't think they're going to make it there. I, I think they will They will hit the hot button before it would get there. And my take on 9-11 is completely... It's very different than the narrative, so let's, I, I let's don't want to. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that though. Now. That for another one, right? Because yeah, I yeah. go deep, and I know JC will go deep on it. And Drew's not here. It's not the same without him. Mm -hmm. And again, to let everybody know, Drew is not feeling well tonight. Uh, we're thinking about you, brother. We miss you. Um, so we'll save nine eleven for when Drew's back and feeling better. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, let's stick with let's stick with the uh, the Simpsons. Simpsons. I wanted to bring um, another one up here. Uh, it says on the West Wing special short in 2019, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's election was was played there. Now we're getting in that area, that time frame that that's possible. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you know there's noise being made, but again. I'm sorry, even if there's just years separated and whatnot, the fact that that was on the on the on the West Wing, you know, and then they took care of of winning the the election is is really you know something. And then, uh, oh geez, here here we go. This is a great one. I think one of the funniest moments that's ever happened in terms of making a new car or whatever. Oh, but, the Cybertruck. Uh, the Cybertruck. Yeah, uh, in 1991, that's when I, geez, I was a freshman playing football at Youngstown State. We won our first national championship in 91. Mm -hmm. Oh, brother, where are thou? Season two, episode 15, a cyber truck. And there was a cyber truck. Uh, and definitely does not look like, you know, what, what Tesla rolled out. But, yeah. Uh, it says, does anyone still remember the unfortunate and hilarious? The Homer, Homer's eighty-two thousand dollar ridiculous car, quickly ruined his half brother Herb Al's lavish life. Meant to cater to every American, Homer's <laughs> outlandish ideas end up creating a mess of a car that tries hard to be futuristic, but ends up looking like trash in the process. And if anyone can see, yeah, that is what the car looks like. Yeah. Hey, um. Uh very homer matt matt can you just pop i, I know we're not doing 9 11 but pop glenn uh dennison's uh comment up sure there it is right there mm -hmm. did a quick search lone gunman discovered a rogue government plan to hijack airliner and crash it into world trade <laughs> excuse me world trade center and blame it on foreign government it was the pilot episode six months before 9 11 yeah I, I mean what do like, you think I, I don't think we should uh like i know we're focusing on the simpsons but i think we should i don't mind this branching out like like this right here just like what you're right saying there. uh jc yeah, as well because this is what, kind what of all is under the umbrella i, you I think that's this was a false flag uh, uh event <sighs> I think partially the reason that this the the show was canceled was because of this pilot episode, right? Mm -hmm. like, uh, my opinion was yes as well. I go from the mindset of you heard number of firemen who know all about explosions, yep. who have heard demolition explosions. They heard the demolition da, 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 in the buildings going off. They said that there was a different plane than a commercial airliner by multiple people who yep. saw that plane enter the building and said it was a gray, almost military looking airliner. So my yep. belief, I'm sorry, guys, I don't want to start anything out there and people in the chat that don't believe. I believe it was a false flag event to get people to go and, and get Saddam Hussein and, and his career, mm -hmm. so to speak. JC? Yeah, um, I I do believe that the government had knowledge that 9-11 was going to occur. 
I will go as far as to say that I think that maybe they allowed it to happen or that they even maybe had a hand in some of the events that cause the causation for 9-11. The one thing that I just cannot get behind, no matter how hard I try and look into it, is that there were legitimately people's families on those planes that yeah. lost loved ones yeah. now if this was one giant conspiracy these were military planes these passengers never existed we're now saying that all of these victims families are lying so now we get into sandy hook territory so, no 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 so no, I, no, no I, I i i think that those planes were actually hijacked and taken to another location and what happened to those people i cannot say so those people are real. Those people are missing. Um, but I do have I do have one question here. How can you make cell phone calls? And I know I know we shouldn't be. I know we're going on this, but how can you make cell phone calls on an airplane um, when you're flying above all these towers? When you're flying, you know, when they were calling their loved ones from their cell phones. The one the guy, the famous one. Let's roll that one. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. No, like, and, 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 I don't just, think oh, sorry, they go ahead. all were. That's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to say, I think one of those planes was an actual uh, hijacked airliner, one of the two. But I think one of them, from all of the people that saw the other one, uh, I think it might have been a, a, a false plane. Uh, what happened with all the other people? That's the thing. Where, where are they? What happened to them? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, big rabbit hole we're jumping down yeah okay so I, I i definitely think we should save this for another one because i <laughs> i can i can go very deep on this and it's something this was my my eye opener that's what i'll say 9 11 yeah. was my like one of these ones but it wasn't on 9 11 i believed the narrative for a long time until someone actually said hey why don't you watch this why don't you look at this? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, and, and that's the thing is I say everyone should have an open mind. You should not, you know, you should not believe everything that you're told. You should not believe everything you should always be open to have your mind changed and, and do it like methodically, you know, don't just jump on the bandwagon. You know, you should just take your time. Even if we're saying this, don't believe us. Go look into it for yourself. Right. Sugi brings up a good point um, about Pearl Harbor being a false flag event. I 100 percent. I know I'm not going to say it was it was done by the United States, but we knew about it and we let it oh, happen. Yeah. If I recall, didn't they? No, no, that was the there, there was a, the, the, like the Japanese were posting in the newspapers or was that about the um the ships being uh torpedoed they're posting that in the newspaper saying oh. if you go on the ship we are going to be torpedoing it so don't go on there i'll have to look yeah, into that but that's another one fun, fun fact about um world war ii and even as far back as world war one um that a lot of people didn't i didn't even know about this until like the last six years but the japanese had <laughs> they had balloons that they would put bombs on they would float them across the in the airstream so this goes back to you remember was that last year when we had like the random balloons two years ago already wow okay wow but the japanese put bombs you know on balloons and flowed them across to the pacific and they would land in like oregon and they'd explode and you see this... that that is nothing have you heard about the americans um were were having sending balloons over as well and using bats and lighting them on fire. No, yeah, I have not heard that. Yeah, because because bats yes, will... caught a lot of things on fire too. It is, it is crazy. I know. I read about that. I was like, "What? Are you kidding me?" So that the bats would go and roost into like these locations, um, like uh, underneath the houses. And of course, the houses were all made of you know thickets and and like a you know like a wood kind of thing, and light them on fire. I agree. Yeah. yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. You know, when uh, it, it, it's it's crazy that we're you know we put so much effort um, in designing how to kill other people. You know, we put all this effort into creating these 
ways to destroy and destruction, you know, if we could just turn that, twist that, and move it into another direction, which, of course, we are. We are. But I, I just find that there's so much time and money and effort put into um, killing people. And I, I agree. And I, you know, let it. And we're switching. I'm going to be switching the subject just for a second. And I think that's why that, you know, other uh, life forms that are way ahead of where we are have, for the most part, decided not to let the entire planet know about that they're out there. The old, you guys are, you know, to them, we could be just, you know, ants or monkeys and we're killing ourselves and each other. And they're like, they need to get farther past there my feelings on that real quick but let's not switch it too fast is you know if you guys could help us get past that monkey kill each other stage mm -hmm. come on you know come on and help us out <laughs> um but you know i want to go back to to our subject here i i found this one uh funny as well and it was the um here i just had it it was when the tiger attack happened to oh, uh, Siegfried and Roy, Siegfried and Roy, yes, mm -hmm. that was uh, Springfield season five, episode ten in nineteen ninety three. Again, uh, yeah. he he, it happened uh, in Springfield, or how I learned to stop worrying and love legalized gambling. Mister Burns brings the luxurious and excessive Vegas culture to Springfield building a casino and Siegfried and Roy were there. And during the performance, their trained white tiger suddenly turns on them and mauls both of them. So, yeah, that that's crazy. So th th that is, you know, that that's not a, I don't know, like one that could be Mr. Screwed or something off. else. Like yeah. th that is pretty damn spot on. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely yep. something not going to happen. Um, just to say, see what Stugi said, cover up the fact these had air to ground radar on our World War II planes. They started a propaganda campaign that our pilots ate a lot of carrots that improved their eyesight. Yes, I heard that, that one. one. That is actually 100% true. There's, there's no medical evidence that eating extra carrots right. will improve your yeah, eyesight, right. yep. but they, the government that. passed that yeah. off. Because because what is it what what's the is it lycopene is that the lycopene and, and one of the vitamins I forget which one yeah that it, it that it can promote healthy eyesight and that and that's true that that eating carrots can can help aid but it's not going to improve your eyesight right that was one hundred percent an actual eat a ton of it and I think if it's part of your your regular diet like your whole life you can improve little parts of it but i think when that study came out it's like anything uh, beta carotene so, that's it yeah beta the initial, My bad. The yeah. Initial, yeah beta carotene thank you um you know well, one of the initial finds of things oh my god we gotta start eating tons of this oh uh eat tons of bacon that will help make me healthy okay that's all i'm gonna eat is bacon you know and <laughs> i eat plenty of bacon i, I, eat plenty I can of tell bacon. you right now it does not make you healthy. Don't listen to it. No. I'm going to argue against you on that no, one. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I know what you're going to say. The fats. The fats and that. Fats are great. Don't listen to the result. But, but it's not the nitrates. The, the nitrates, the nitrates within the bacon, that's the best. Preserved best. bacon. But you yes. can get uncured bacon that doesn't have nitrates in it. I have some. Yes. And right? that's what so I, I, I get. That's what I give to my dogs because nitrates are not good for dogs either. So when I give them bacon, I make sure I give them a nitrated bacon but there's a whole thing well we're going way far off here because now we're going into the diet fad that started like, in like well the 60s okay yeah and 70s. Let, let, <laughs> let's let's not let's not do that but no, i do um, at some point want to talk about that because they demonized and villainized butter eggs red yes, meats the things yes. that human beings have been eating for hundreds of thousands of years things yep. that sustain our bodies but I you know what you here's a here's a glycerin based vegetable oil in a plastic container eat that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here's Fun. seed oils eat those now not all seed oils are bad yeah okay not um, all of them now, because now there's people, a, okay people have been using seed oils for hundreds of years right like in greece they've outside of um they they'd use rape seed oil um they've used um sunflower well, oil rape seed is canola which canola is not a good one though I, but they've been using it for hundreds of years it's not good 
I, I have I have canola but, oil in my cabinet. But hang on, before before we go too far onto that one, I actually wanted to bring up something which which kind of ties in with your carrot thing was uh, spinach. So who's old enough to remember Popeye? Oh, of I, course. I know Are Popeye. You okay, so remember when he would always eat his spinach and make himself strong? Mm -hmm. Do you know where that came from? Is it, you're gonna laugh. It was a miss. It, like a misprint, we'll say, on a decimal point. They moved the decimal point over. Um, like it, it should have been, like the, it, it was for iron. It was for the iron content within spinach, okay? And it was supposed to be like point something iron content, but the decimal point moved over. So instead of it like being like 0.3, you know, grams, it was like three grams. And they're like, oh, iron makes you strong. So that is where that came from. That's why spinach, that's why Popeye ate spinach to get strong because it was the iron content within it. And it was because of a, we'll say a typo. <laughs> yeah. so, so guess what? And, and don't call me out on this because I can't remember the exact name of the chemical in spinach, but it's actually not that great for you. Really? Far better greens. Beet greens, turnip greens, the, oh, greens the tops of those are way, if, if you can avoid spinach, of you, I'm not okay. saying it's going to hurt you. But there are far better greens than spinach. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back here. Um, yeah, the God particle. Oh, okay. Yes, I was just gonna say that one. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So season ten, episode two, the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace. This is when Homer decides to become um, an influential inventor, like Thomas Edison. And in a small part of the episode, Homer is like just writing on a chalkboard. And it reveals itself to be a very complex math equation. Now, it's not exact as the Higgs boson, um, like the mass of the Higgs boson, but it is so, so close to it that it is uncanny. So now, I, it's not necessarily Homer is writing this. It is the, you know, whoever was the illustrator, or whoever actually decided to write this. Like, where did they come up with this? Who, mm -hmm. who did that? Wow. I agree. Like some 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 really, really smart people or and, and like, you know, we say everybody's like, oh, it's Matt growing. Well, is Matt growing writing every single of these episodes? No. So, you know, it, it's it's maybe the collective, maybe the collective themselves are tapping into some sort of, you know, universal consciousness or some sort of like you know, null time point where everything exists all at the same time, which technically that's why, you know, some people believe time is time exists. It's happening all around us, you know, past, present, future is happening at the exact same time. Perhaps they've tapped in, you know, like a direct line into this without knowing. And that is, that is exactly what I believe. I believe this is, I believe it's happening. Like, I, I don't think that these things are, just coincidental. I think it is happening, but I believe it is unconsciously happening. That's my, that is my belief on this all, that this is unconsciously happening where we, where they are tapping into something. Um, and, and they're able to pull this down for these writers and these writers, these group of writers are, are able to do this. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, the malfunctioning voter machines. That, <laughs> that was mm -hmm. in 2008, season 20, episode four. Mm -hmm. um, Free House of Horror seems to have predicted an electoral mishap related to former President Barack Obama. A uh, brief moment depicts Homer voting for, an, for Obama in Booth, but in, in his soon revealed who have been tallied as one of John McCain. Homer is terrified of the machine, which won't let him exercise his right. I mean, we all know about machines and all of that. Um, yeah, definitely something that has been uh, of, of content and uh, hot discussions uh, over the last eight years, basically. <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to tell a story, it's a very short story and it's anecdotal. So you don't have to take my word on this and I'm not going to give out any. I don't really trust you, Jay-Z. No. <laughs> I wouldn't trust me either. To be I honest with you. Let's, but let's in the interest of not doxing myself or the place that I was working at, I worked for a government, um, 
some years ago before the last uh before the 2018 election okay mm -hmm. and um so you know kind of midtermy kind of stuff but during that time um, since i was in it i had access direct access to servers that dealt with these voting machines okay immediately upon even getting to the building that i was at to to protect to manage these servers and protect to those servers from certain things is that many of them were connected directly to the internet which they never should have been we received phone calls saying that they'd had these internet connections and they were performing updates on these computers now most of them were run by linux they weren't windows servers they were linux servers but that doesn't mean that they're not you know from a security standpoint that they're safe because mm -hmm. there are absolutely linux um vulnerabilities that exist and the main question was for us in in the SOC, the security operations center was why were these servers connected to the internet at the time of voting now it is true the voting machines there's two ways that you can update them you can connect them and update them or you can use a usb drive and update them they both represent two different threat uh, vectors right because connecting to the internet with a voting machine is a threat uh is a risk and and using a usb stick you're plugging something into a machine that you're assuming is safe right a usb like you would no, you would no, never no. pick a usb up out of a parking lot oh, plug it hey, into a voting hey, machine absolutely. but we had people that did that we had people that picked up a usb stick in a parking lot because they thought it was a usb stick that was dropped by one of the employees coming in to update the voting machine and they just plugged it into the voting machine just a random usb stick in the parking lot right so like i said I, 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 I'm not aware of there being any inconsistencies that night that I worked there with the voting machines, but if it happened where I was at, I'm sure that much larger constituencies, much larger cities were also dealing with the same issue. And we don't know who authorized these the internet connection for these voting machines. They should have never have been connected to the internet, especially on the night of voting. No. Michigander, the Michigander was uh, saying, you know, if voting matters, like we wouldn't be able to. That, that was Mark Twain, you know, and Michigander was saying that, you know, voting doesn't really matter. It doesn't count. And I almost believe that it, it, if the legitimacy I of the something real quick, well, yeah, I've yeah. had to ban, I, I have I have had to ban two people in the last five minutes because they came to troll. Um, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to argue with people. We're not going to let our, our people in the chat argue with people. So if you would like to be banned from the channel, please speak up now and I will happily get rid of you so that the people that are here to do what we're doing, um, we can get on with the night and enjoy ourselves because I don't play games here at Planet 412. And my family, the extended family here in the chat, they're not here to listen to that either. So yeah. step up if anybody else wants banned from the channel. I, 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 I agree. I, I, I saw that as well. You know, I'm glad you did that. So, yeah, for those for, for those who are asking who you, you haven't seen them because they were um, uh, like as soon as Matt bans them, all their comments are removed. So not to worry. If you see something, you know, don't worry. Matt or um, Twirl Pro will be taking care of that and getting them out yeah. ASAP. Uh, Muching too, you guys beat me to it though. I don't. I, I missed the Jack Candy one. I kind of wish I would have seen that comment. It was, um, very, it was very ignorant. Extreme. Oh, it was extremely yeah. ignorant. Yeah. I yeah. hope. I hope it was about me, please. Um, so uh, Abbott Hoffman says NSA trolls. Yeah, we're we're talking the subject. Of course, the NSA is here, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now, yes, so so the the voting machines, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, if it really mattered, they'd be removed. If it really mattered, it, they would be, you know, that, that would it, it would all be done. You know, like like the same Dominion voting machines um, yep. are being used in Canada as well, and we've had issues where it's like right now there's a recall of one of our our mayors um, because everybody's like, who voted for this? Like, no one everybody's like we don't know and she she won uh pretty easily and it was just crazy yeah 
Yeah. Um, and then to add on, on top of that, you know, I, I do think it's quite ironic that after, in, at least in the United States, after oh, uh, Trump. Just, just one second, JC. Matt, there's there's another one there. Flash in the pan. Okay, he's gone. Wait, what? There's Flash in the pan. Uh, he is he is gone as well. There was a group of them. Um, there's a group of them that obviously had you know wait, wait, something to do. He, wait, is he talking about us or is he talking about the NSA? No, he's Are talking we, about us. Oh, I'm not scared of words. I'll leave him in here. I'll go. No, no, in. I don't yeah. want it. People here don't need this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You just ja you just banned the wrong person. You just banned. Yeah, yeah. you banned the wrong. You banned the wrong person, Matt. <laughs> that was Stacy. Who did I ban? Stacy. PJ. Oh, no. PJ Jean. All right. Yeah. Well, who did that? Guy that did it. His name is Jeff. I I didn't know Flash in the Pan was trolling. I seen their other comments. They didn't seem trolly. Okay. okay. Well, 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 then check it out. Ch ch check it out then. We're, get, we're getting a little. We're getting, we're getting a little. We're getting a little spicy with the band hammer here. Let's be careful. <laughs> that, wasn't me. that was my wife. So we'll get PJ Jean back. Here, you gotta grab her. Neither did I. Okay, let's get back on subject. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll pick it up. You, Matt, if you wanna, if you wanna figure out that, I will. Uh, I'll continue on here, or or yeah. JC, you continue on. So next one would be a big one. In my opinion, I don't know about you guys, is the three eyed fish. So I so famous for the Simpsons. What about that, JC? I I remember the episode with the three eyed fish. Like I can picture the the the, the fish okay. itself, but I can't remember what the episode's about. Okay, so the episode was called Two Cars in Every Garage and Three Eyes on Every Fish. Season two. So this is season two, episode four. Um, and, and they called the three eyed fish blinky. And I remember that they served it to, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Mr. Burns there, because he was supposed to eat it, you know, like to pretend that everything was fine. So they had caught this near um, the power plant. And of course, um, you know, of course it was mutated. So turns out Blinky has a real life counterpart. Over a decade ago, an Argentinian fisherman caught a three-eyed wolf fish in a reservoir near a nuclear plant. Um, the, the fisherman who recounts the, the surprise of finding this rare specimen, but there was no uh, mention of Mr. Burns in this, uh, in this article though. <laughs> Unfortunate. I mean, is it out of the realm of reality and possibility that there are mutations in animals like a three eyed fish four, you know, five legged, I don't know, deer. <laughs> I mean, is, did that is why why predict something like that something so random that maybe it never even it was an oddity right it was picked up as an oddity and even i i remember the episode but i would never remember the three-eyed fish being caught like that just seems so yeah because there are oddities like if you ever go to any of the like freak shows um you know two-headed snakes and and like you know if we look at the oddities of humans as well you know like we have birth defects all the time mm -hmm. so you know, but but the coincidence of catching it near a nuclear power plant that adds yeah, that adds well, to it. Though. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it's the anti-nuclear power trolls, as we know <laughs> now. I don't know what everybody else's opinions is on this, but nuclear energy is the cleanest form of energy that we have ever had, and when done safely there's almost 0% chance of there being any kind of catastrophic issue or leaching into the water or anything like that. Now, of course mm -hmm. people can throw stuff at me like Chernobyl or, or you three mile Island and stuff like that. Now I, I said, when, when handled appropriately and maintained appropriately, it'd be safest, cleanest energy source that we have. Now, of course, big coal, is gonna not want you to don't build power plants don't build you know keep using coal or natural gas keep using natural gas which natural gas is kind of okay right and, and well, i well, mean fracking's yeah, not that great but yes but even in all honesty coal was super inexpensive they had reduced the and and, and i know this personally because where i grew up there were 
three large coal plants, okay? And they had were able to scrub the coal, like like the, the pollutants out, so amazingly. They were using algae, actually. They were using algae mm -hmm. in the stacks to scrub the coal, like to scrub the exhaust. And it was next to clean. You know, like it was extremely clean, extremely cheap, and we had a huge supply and we still have this huge supply and now they are in the process of turning turning them over to natural gas and shutting them down and of course energy yeah. prices are skyrocketing and i'm not anti-coal by the way the, the the nuclear thing is just a juxtaposed the coal Sorry, is fine i'm, I'm just yeah. last, laughing at uh, daniel evans uh, comment uh, you look like the bassist from the band america america yeah <laughs> I, I need to look that up now okay that's that's interesting yeah but realistically uh, coal coal is finite right it's a finite resource you know it, is it it isn't yeah. I, I i mean it is in, because it's, in gonna, our, it's gonna keep producing it's going to in, in our use case within the next 100 years if we were to mine all the coal it's not just going to magically come back right but nuclear energy is theoretically unlimited yeah it, now it what is. do we do with, now what do we do with the fuel rods we stick them in a. We stick them in barrels, and we, and we put them in mountains. We we carve out mountains. We stick. I think them in we now. should figure them out better. I was always an avid kid, just shooting them in the outer space. Um, yeah, but they're going to hit the firmament and come right back. Ooh. <laughs> careful, careful. We're way, careful. Way, way off topic here. Careful. I I I I am a supporter. I'm not. I'm not anti coal. I am pro nuclear energy. The when and, and, and I understand. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. You're like, no, no, don't get me. I'm not saying coal is. I'm just saying the best is nuclear. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying when done appropriately, nuclear energy is the best. Like mm -hmm. per per energy output, per you know coverage, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, that doesn't always work out like that, you know, but. We, we I don't want to get off into, topic again. We are so far off topic again. I know, I know. We're, like, we're, we're going to start talking about doing reps and uh, working out at the gym again, and what supplements we're taking. Um, okay, so let let's bring it back. So I'm I, I got I have this list. So I'm going to go with this list. So winning the Nobel Prize in economics. Okay, so this was a, and, and this was the the title was Elementary School Musical Season 22 Episode One. This is in 2010. So. The year's Nobel Prize winners are announced in the episode, Elementary School Musical, which shows a confused crowd as Krusty the Clown is declared to have won the Peace Prize with Homer as his chosen companion. So um, so they fly to, uh, but that, that's beside that. Before the elaborate tra trap in season 22 episode of Freeze Gag Show, a betting pool card contained Milhouse and other students' predictions for the Nobel Prize. One of these Milhouse bet for the Nobel Prize in economics is banked our home string. The Finnish economics would actually go on to win the award six years later without having to go through what Krusty did for the... Okay. So they predicted who the economics um, Nobel Prize would uh, winner six years in advance. Now... Why? Is that an educated guess? You know, you're, you're picking someone who is possibly really amazing um in economics and you're maybe just making a guess on it what do you think i mean that's a weird thing to predict mm -hmm. uh you know if i was running a, a show that was really predicting things i would want something bigger than banked holstrom winning the nobel peace prize six years later now was was had he already been in the running for years that's a great question that? i do, i don't know but like six years though like, you know but i i guess these guys that's what they do you know they're doing econ you know economics and how many people are up for the econ you know the nobel peace prize in economics right like it's not you and me <laughs> definitely definitely because i would not be here <laughs> no <laughs> right yeah uh well, what I mean, about just... uh oh go ahead sorry i yeah i don't it's just so, such a, a random obtuse thing to predict i mean mm -hmm. i don't know like why if, if you if I, if they had all this knowledge or okay let's even argue that they're only being fed certain bits of futurist futuristic predictions why that what significance does that have and i know coincidence after coincidence at some point it stops being a coincidence right but it just yeah. doesn't that doesn't make sense to me that that is what they predicted Perfect. yes yeah <laughs> i i think that one is maybe just a 
a good est, you know, as just a good guess. It's kind of like, well, I think that this is, yeah. you know, right. an educated guess that most likely can happen, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, that would be like if I were to say, "Hey, um, I'm predicting, you know, three years ago that Biden's going to win the next presidential election," you know, and how many people are running, you know, Trump yeah. and Kennedy. Yeah. I mean, and then four or five years later, that happens. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it a prediction, right? Now, I don't know anything about it, who it, you, run- you're playing statistics in that one. Is statistics, you know, you're yeah. you're playing odds and stuff like that. And 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 I guess that's like the next one too that I was going to talk about was the Lady Gaga and the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, but does anyone remember Lady Gaga when she dressed up like a Nazi on stage for um, Hillary Clinton? <laughs> no, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. She literally they did she did a concert <laughs> for for Hillary Clinton's campaign back in I don't know 2015 or whenever that was. Mm-hmm. And she you can look it up. She's dressed like a Nazi in the mm-hmm. uh, at the concert. That that's interesting. That is really interesting. You know? Anybody now I just and, and I'm not even gonna go into the conspiracies behind that, but if yeah. anybody else were to dress up like it, if anybody on the, for the Trump <laughs> campaign would dress like a Nazi, that would have been the end. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, do you never I mean you could you'd never hear the the end. It would have been everywhere, plastered all over TV. Yep. One hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Did- Sorry, I was trying to find a way. I, I can't figure out. And there is a way to unban someone. If anybody knows how I can do that real quick or knows her, uh, how to get a hold of her, please let her know that that was just because the list moved and I hit the wrong person. I'm very mm-hmm. sorry to TJ Jean. Uh, she will be un, un, she'll be unbanned, I promise. Uh, I can't figure out how to do it. So if anybody knows, I want to get her um, unbanned as fast as possible. I feel really bad about that. But there was definitely a group of people that came in with an agenda tonight to yeah. troll. My wife made a point. Hey, you guys are getting better. You're growing. So I was told when your channel gets bigger, the more trolls are going to pop out. So um, I'm sorry to everybody in the in the chat that that occurred. Uh but I just want to uh, unban uh, PJ Jean. I f- I think there is a way. Yeah. To so view. so I- if you know his channel name, you go yeah, to I, it. Okay. okay. And under the channel info, there is a flag. Click on it to unblock him or her. So when you go to PJ Jean, it's PJ Jean, um, and and that is how you do it. PG in 86, isn't it? I can't remember. It's up here. I'll find it, man. What a yeah, please do. What a yeah, train that, wreck. I know because P, <laughs> PJ is 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 always I, I, on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got upset yeah. and and I'll take the blame for that. Um, that was an accident. Yeah. It, you know, hopefully, yeah, hopefully she's not. Uh, is PJ? He's sorry, P, PG in 63. Let me see if I can if I can unban it. Okay. PG, PG, yeah, PG. Oh, there he is. There it is. That's PG. PG Gene is back. Did I get banned? Hello, no 63. Oh, and they're saying this is hilarious. So, so you might want to pull up for uh, PJ. I am. I am. Oh, no, so happy. I'm so sorry, PG. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Matt was like, "That's it, you're out." Matt, 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 was just, like, Matt just totally blanket, hated. blanket yeah. banned everybody. Yeah, yeah. PJ, so I accidentally <laughs> banned you for a minute. I'm so sorry. That was an accident. What happened is the person that I was banning the because you guys were were uh, you know having it it move quickly. Uh, the next one popped up, and I was like, "Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry." I'm sorry, and thank you, Masochist Mouth. I appreciate that. No, hey, PG, Matt, Matt did it totally on purpose. I just want to say if, that. <laughs> if you come over to YouTube at Sasquatchers, we won't ban you there, just so you know. <laughs> yes, yes. I got upset because I'm not used to having people ignorant on purpose, so I apologize. 
Um, but we're not going to have it here. It's just not going to happen. So, mm -hmm. yes. And thank you, Masochist Mouth. I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody understanding. And TJ and I owe you. I'm going to send you something because of that. So, <laughs> it's, it's going to be another ban, <laughs> a lifetime ban. <laughs> send me an email uh, to the to the channel. Yeah, it's going to be email. a lifetime ban. Not and only I'm a five minute ban, lifetime. Give you a little gift from the channel <laughs> for, for that. So. Uh, yeah. Please email me at the channel's uh, email. We're uh, now, yeah. now people are going to be trying to get banned on purpose to get gifts. Exactly, exactly. It's like yeah, now I get something free. I get something free. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you, so, Numa. So it's now, wrong. I, I, I would just I just brought up uh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Gaga. So uh, oh, yeah. her her appearance at the Super Bowl. Um, and she was in the air and on the on the Simpsons. Yeah. She had wires holding her up and in the Super Bowl she was on wires. Now here's a question. Did she, like this is some something I've always wondered. Do they some people see things and maybe on purpose or subconsciously recreate it then and like make it actually happen? Is that a possibility? Like let's say uh I don't know you call it like artistic designer. I don't know what you like the person who, who who's like, okay, this is what we're going to do for this performance. Maybe they saw this episode years ago and it's subconsciously in their mind. And then they just recreate this. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going, we're going from the Simpsons predicting big things like nine 11 down to lady Gaga's performance at the Super Bowl. It just doesn't that, make sense. Why, why predict little things like that? But then you predicted this huge event, right? Okay, so then, and and Lady Gaga is not the first one that's been on wires at the Super Bowl. I, agreed, <laughs> agreed. You know th that could be one where we're just kind of doing it, but it could also be that the person who was, you know, took the idea. I don't, yeah, person who's just like, oh, hey, this is a great idea, or real life imitates art. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Done. Art imitates art in that one. I guess you would say. No oh, art. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know. I just. <laughs> It, it, I'm, I'm having like a clash of conscience here because why predict big things and then predict little things like banked Bartman or whatever his name was winning the the it, it, it doesn't make sense and I mean maybe maybe they're laughing at us maybe they're throwing it in our faces what, that they what, can do it right so I, I'm I'm curious about Dwight's uh, comment here some songwriters have done that George Harrison proved that in a court case that's beyond I'm not a Beatles fan sorry no. I'm not only sure about it. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. So, Dwight, Dwight, if you want, write yeah, out a big one, and we'll post. We'll put it. We'll throw it up here. Okay. Yeah. Or Matt will, yeah. Right. Let us. Yeah. Let us know more about. Be careful though. You might get banned. <laughs> okay. All right. The cheeks are red enough as it is. <laughs> He's like, enough, enough. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Fair, fair enough. So what are we going to hit next? You know, the Walt Disney and Fox merger uh, that uh, uh, that they did as well. So they it, so they, in 1998, uh, they had an episode called When You Wish Upon a Star. That was season 10, episode five. Um, they predicted the Fox and Disney uh, merger. I mean, that had been talked about for many years, right? Like that wasn't something that just came out of nowhere. Fox and Disney's merger. Yeah. But like over 10 years, uh, over a decade, that's a long time. I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Like, what significance does that play? It, 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 but again, it's just predicting that that happened, you know, again, something else for that happened as well. Like, but why? <laughs> why not? It, it's just another one or. What else? What what else we got here? What you know? There's got to be some big ones. We we did the Higgs boson. We did uh, 9 11 nine eleven. Nine eleven was a big one. The three eyed fish, um, Lady Gaga, Walt Disney. Hold on. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I mean, here's here's one about selling ferrets as toy poodles. So just to my point, they predicted that people would be selling ferrets as toy poodles. And in Argentina, some man was shocked when he bought what he thought was a toy poodle only to find out it was a ferret. <laughs> like, what does that matter? What significance does that play? <laughs> I'm going to guarantee you that they saw the episode and was like, this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. somebody that 
again, art imitates, I'll, I'll call mm -hmm. it art again in this purpose, right? De decorating your ferret as a poodle is art. <laughs> Subconscious uh, so plagiarism. Now, Baldwin had commented he had a song that was similar to another hit. He remembered it from a dream, and the other songwriter agreed. And then his next comment is, it was considered subconscious plagiarism. I see. I mean, I guess I can kind of see that point a little bit, a little bit. Like, I, I'll indulge that. I mean, when you're especially a songwriter, right? You hear other songs, you listen to other songs, you pick up on tones, you pick up on lyrics, you pick up on all that stuff because that's what you do. You're a songwriter. So I could I could understand subconsciously plagiarizing. I mean, look at all the pop songs. They're all the same four chords. Oh, God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's not too far out of the realm of reality. Guys, yes, thank you, Twirl Pros. Uh, if anybody has questions, please put it in caps. Um, did you guys mention the Ebola outbreak? No, no, no did but, not. but they I, did. I, they did predict that. Yeah, yeah but in 1997, uh, they they uh, said that Lisa Sachs episode, and then uh, the Ebola. They would. They didn't know it was going to occur. Obviously, they had one in 2000, and then again in 2014. Yeah, interesting. I mean, now, very interesting. Now. There is, and also, of course, is the pandemic as well. You know, uh, season four, episode twenty-one, Margin Chains. Um, it it, uh, um, it was the Osaka flu, and it was very mm -hmm. similar. You know, they didn't have a treatment immediately available. Um, uh, the the doctor recommended the patients get some bed rest. That's kind of like really what they what they did to, uh, for it as well, and. It's interesting. In very that was interesting. You know what? That this one right here, in my opinion, is completely. We watched The Simpsons. Whoa! Don't know. Ooh, I heard that. I heard that. That is a deep thunderclap uh, outside my window. So that storm everyone's talking about. Yeah, if you heard it through the computer. Uh, so this one. Uh, in 1995, Lisa's Wedding, Season 6, Episode 19, Robots as Librarians, my opinion. This was completely utilized because of they saw this. In 2016, some brilliant Aberswyth Aber, University students did exactly that by building a prototype for a library robot. So... Mm. I, I mean, that right there could be explained. I mean, my um, local Mexican place has a robot server that goes around and plays mariachi and gives you your food. So what? <laughs> yes, I'm kidding? dead serious. And it is it is the absolute worst thing in the world. I you would place your order it. on like the built in screen that it has. And it's so loud. Like, it, why turn the volume down the mariachi music, guys? So Don, Don, Don Tequila, if you're works. watching. Sorry, man. What? Explain how it works, JC. Exactly, real quick. So it's a, it's one of those helper robots. You ever see at the airports now? They're starting to get them, where like they're like a kiosk robot almost. Like you can go up to it and you can ask it questions and you can pull up maps and like flight times and stuff. It's it's basically that same robot. It's this big triangular kind of shaped woman robot thing and it just goes around and you place your order on and it goes back to the kitchen puts the order in you know electronically and then they put the plates of food on it and it'll bring it out to your table which is pre-programmed where your table's at it has a whole map <laughs> program of the restaurant yeah. right kind of like a Roomba you know like it knows the yeah. layout of the of that yeah yeah but it's got this in our house today and I really love. I need to get. Well, you one should get it to song. play mariachi music. <laughs> I just need to get the one that has the the new one that has the uh, mop, wet mop on it as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. So you know, because there's areas that needs it, um, but those are great. That takes care of a lot, especially when you have light floors like we do in our kitchen. Oh, is mm. that awesome? Um, now, now that now this this robot. Taking away jobs from actual working Mexicans. I 
I mean, if you want to call them working, but <laughs> whoa, shots fired. Is that, that might get me a ban here. Um, Daniel <laughs> yeah, Evans exactly. said, I, Daniel Evans said, I seen that on Victorious. Is that the Nickelodeon show Victorious? Are you banning me, Matt? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the Nickelodeon show, Daniel Evans, right? The Victorious. What is he? What are we Which, talking That's about? something else we'll have to talk about sometime. All this, once everything dies down with the Nickelodeon stuff that's been going on. Mm. Uh, with, yeah, Dan, Dan Evans said yes on Victoria. I don't know if I want to touch that. I, I'm, I'd love to get into more ghosts and UFOs here again. Nah, we're going to talk about Nickelodeon feet. <laughs> My puppy Hadley is not happy at the moment. He is scared mm -hmm. from the storm. Yeah. Probably got banned so, from the channel. No, never, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's not say never. If you really just went nuts on here, and I was just like, what is going on? When me and Rye were like, what is what 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 is he doing? And you're screaming and he, starts, he does that all the know, time. JC does that all the time. <laughs> well, he starts stripping his clothes off and things like that. Uh, I lose <laughs> control sometimes, guys. I don't know what yeah. to tell you. It's uh, it's all this testosterone one right here. I it is. I understand. <laughs> all you can eat restaurants. False advertising. New kid on the block. Um, it says. Season four, episode eight, 1992. Homer, the all you can eat buffet, the frying Dutchman was a dream come true. He went there and ate, and then a real world uh, court case would soon take place because basically Homer ate so much that they wanted him to leave, and he also ended up eating two plastic lobsters during his time. <laughs> um, but a real, they ended up kicking him out, and he and he it says Homer is annoyed and takes them to court for false advertising because they said you were eating too much. We, I don't, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, and there's not a whole lot of all you can eat buffets left after COVID, right? No, no. But I, I there's one what? near my house that's a Chinese all you can eat buffet, and I'm gonna, not going to lie, like I love cheap shitty Chinese food, like it's one of my favorite things in the Chinese world. Period. As long as it's done well. Um, it, it's really good. I they I have like a it. they have a two they have a two hour limit on the oh, buffet. Um, okay, so there and are... I've noticed that other places that have buffets. There's a there's a place that has a taco like burrito buffet where you can go up and make your own tacos and stuff. Or like even the Indian buffet that's like 15 minutes from my house. If they all have like a time limit. Uh, that's the smart way to do it. Well, this real world case. Uh, would soon take place when a man from coincidentally Springfield, Massachusetts, sues Golden Corral Corporation for two million dollars for false advertising. This is after he's kicked out of one of their all-you-can-eat restaurants by one of their employee employees, much like Homer, the man that ends up accepting an out-of-court settlement. This guy did the same. He must have been throwing. Down, yeah. <laughs> dude. Listen, I would, I would be proud of getting kicked out of an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a bigger guy, or at least I was. You know, I've, I've lost a lot I of weight. Am, I'll eat, but, but I, I was never like I, I could eat a lot fast, and then and that's it. Then I hit a wall. You know, it's not. I had a friend who was like much smaller than me. And I swear to God, he had a hollow leg, man. We would go to this all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant, mm -hmm. and they had a two-hour limit too. Like, and this was years ago; they had this. Um, and I'd be like, "Yeah, he's my trump card." You know, I bring him because he can make it. He, he gets his money's worth. He gets his money's worth. When I was in high school, this goes back now. I'm 34 now, so. But when I was in high school, I was uh, way lighter than I am now, and I ran track. And we used to go to all these different Chinese buffets around the area, and I would eat like four, five, six plates of Chinese food like it was nothing, you know. And now I eat like in high school. We would do wings. And oh yeah, we I, did wings too. Yeah, yeah. I could polish off between 60 to 80 wings when I was playing football. Yes. Now, I, I mean, I I can't eat. Probably, I can probably not even eat a dozen there was a, or ten. If right anybody's now. listening from Indiana, Pennsylvania, IUP campus, there there was a rush a bar called Murphy's Two, and they had a hundred wings, 
and me and a friend of mine would both go and we would destroy a hundred wings like it was nothing. Yeah, back when we were when I was playing balls, I was I was able to kill them and I'll be a little rude. My wife will be like, what is he doing? So I would go with my one older brother once in a while, or when my buddies football teammates were together and I liked getting different kinds as if I'm getting 60 to 80 wings, I'm getting like garlic and barbecue and, and something else, honey mustard. Well, I, I loved garlic and I would eat a bunch of those and I would, because we're drinking pop, you know, we'll have to burp occasionally. Mm -hmm. And I would go. And blow in people's oh, face. You're horrible. Yeah. You're terrible. Ban. Oh, get up. Ban. Oh, ban. Yeah. Ban. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. So sorry to offend anyone out there. But yeah, um, it was ridiculous. The amount of food that we could eat when we were younger. And I, oh, I for sure. can't do it these days. I really just can't. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I all agree. the seed I oils agree. we were consuming. Mm. Well, I don't know. Are, 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 are we are we coming to an end on this one, or do we have oh, any more? I have, I have some more. Let's here. do it. Anyone who are uh, what is it? Um, the Game of Thrones. Did you guys mention that one? No, no, no. We, I did uh, not. So, Dan Aries, or, I can't pronounce them. Targaryen. 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 So season 29, episode 1 in 2017. Game of Thrones will forever be remembered as a great fantasy show that went downhill and gave its fans one of the worst TV finales ever. Uh, like, like uh, what's the other one? The, um, the Sopranos, Dexter? I agree, as oh. well. Dexter um, as well. Dexter as well. Yeah. This reminds most of how uh, Daenerys, Targaryens, whatever, Drogon burned King's Landing and Goatee. And uh, what happened was the Simpsons, before it ever made it on HBO series, and the Surf Sons, an episode that parodies Westeros and Goatee in general, a dragon burns down the Surf Sons village after Homer revived it. So... Just a little down. I mean, I don't know how much you can connect it to it, you know. And I'm gonna be have, honest. I'm, I think maybe I'm one of the few people. Auto correct. Yeah, I think what I'm one of the see? few people that has not actually watched Game of Thrones. I just didn't care. <laughs> it, it actually I was did not really watch a ton of it either. I, I watched I the first really couple episodes, know. and it was just like an incest orgy, and I was like, okay, I'm done. It was really good. It was really good until it got to like the last season. The last season was like, oh, it's build up, build up. And then it was just like, bleh. It's, you know, it's one. It, one it, I'm sorry. Sorry, Matt. Go ahead. That. No, 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 Matt. Go ahead. When they, when they shamed the queen and were ringing the bell, you know, mm -hmm. shame. Oh, the shame, shame, guy, shame. Yeah. I, it was the first time I'd ever seen. I started watching a little of it here and there. And I love the dragons and all that. But. The one guy, um, the one guy came out and and you know bared himself fully and shook it and was like, ah! and I was like, oh my god, because I had never seen you know a show like that other than. Sorry, I thought you were going to say something yeah. else. Yeah, I did. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I picked this from Antonio. Man. <laughs> shame, shame. That was something that obviously the memes with that. Antonio Vasquez actually asked something off subject my wife brought to my attention. You guys seen the two videos of Dogman in Paraguay. Uh, I'm not familiar with what he's referring to. Are you guys? No, no. I'm not. Okay. Surprised. Well, I guess I will. Uh, Got some homework. Yeah. Dogman Paraguay. Antonio Vasquez. Ah. 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 You see that? Um, I just got trolled. Oh, did you? Yeah. We you just got Rick rolled. Uh, not Rick rolled. On here, it was it was furry nonsense. By Antonio Vasquez, it was furry. I, I'm not saying that that person trolled me, but I clicked on a video that trolled me. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. 
I yeah. thought you meant somebody if, else. If, if you if you have the not trolley link, post it in the chat here for us so we can take a look at it. Yeah, please. If you have the link. Uh, that being said, though, if it was a troll, that was that'd be funny then. You know, it'd be really cool to talk about someday the whole Paraguay Uruguay war that happened in like the late 1800s. There's so much interesting stuff that happened, and a lot of people died. Like, like 60 percent of Uruguay died in that war. I think I just clicked on the same oh, thing. I'm looking at one. <laughs> Guys, I'm looking at one on TikTok that I have seen before. He, I think this one was proven to be a hoax. If he's, if you're referring to one of them as being people in a car driving by, I see that one, set, a swing set, and there's a, a like they say it's a dog man, but I think they proved that that was a hoax. If that's one of them, if not, um, as they Straight said, you know, group. Antonio, um, Antonio, what you do is if if you're on your phone or you're on your computer, just Go to the link above and copy it and stick it in the uh, stick it in the chat and we'll take a look at it from there. Interesting. Now, Ryan, so if you want to pop that up, that one with the swing set, it's a, we could let them see. Not the oh, furry right. one. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second while I uh, re get it. While he while he bookmarks the furry one and closes. Yeah, the exactly. I gotta say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm i'm ready present present arms okay um one second jc is running out real quick to take care of something okay and... i'm i'm ready whenever you are you tell me to rock and roll with it okay, ready. <laughs> I mean, the shape is good, but it, it looks like the head is off. And yes, head. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Antonio, is this one of them? They, they, they talk about it running, though. And she's saying, look at how it walks. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Her. I don't know. It's just kind of convenient that it's it's in a lit up area. By a swing, and there's no reason for it to be over there. And the head just looks off to me. It looks strange. It could it be. Does. I mean, I, we can't be positive. Uh, I, yes, that one Antonio was saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, when people add sound effects and music to videos, I automatically click to the next. Yeah. I, no matter I, how no matter you could show me a video of a real <laughs> dog man standing in front of me that you recorded with the X file music you, playing on it with the X file. If you yeah, playing. if you play the if you play music or sound effects in it, I'm out. I agree. You know, if I could somehow get you know video of it, like if one night I'm sitting in my chair and that sucker really comes through my window and I have a chance to record, you better believe it on what sound effects are happening as I'm <laughs> screaming and messing my pants, you will hear all of that. There will be no music. Now, so. I, I learned that the hard way, though. I had a, a really good video that was sent to me, and I decided to put the X-Files music to it. And I got roasted. And I posted it to Reddit, and I got roasted. Good. And then I good. deleted it, re-uploaded it without the music, and then everybody's like, yes. Thank you. And I'm like, okay, lesson learned. Lesson learned. And uh, Danielle Evans says, yeah, that ruins the videos because if there was a real sound, you couldn't hear it. I agree. Exactly. I agree. Um, let's see. Antonio uh, says, shape shifting in Paraguay, the name of the video. If you could look that up, Ryan, real quick. Okay, I I think that's going to be the same thing, but of course, of course. If it if it, if it is, you'll know immediately. Yeah, yeah, uh, good point. That is. It's going to have "Staying Alive" as the soundtrack. Ha 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 ha! Staying alive, staying alive. Hey, uh, PJ, yeah, we see PJ. You are being seen. So being are seen that means you're being blocked. <laughs> Yeah, you're 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 seen. You're not you're not being uh, blocked or anything like that. Are you? You're commenting. We see you. 
Um, I again, I am very sorry. <laughs> about what happened. It is funny. It's funny. I was like, oh shit. You are here, PJ. Okay, so I'm trying to. I'm still trying to find this. Shape shifting. Mm -hmm. Shape shifting in Paraguay, of course. Oh, no, no, no. Shape shifting. Yeah, I tried shape shifting. I think that's a typo. <laughs> I think that's a typo. Um, Sorry, I had to. <laughs> so that's actually, it's not coming up. But, but let, let me tell you, though, th this could be okay. Why doesn't this come up for our next one? Is shape shifters. Okay. Because when I'm typing this in, I'm getting a ton of stuff. And like we're talking caught on camera kind of thing. And we could have the prepared. What do you guys, I don't know, what, ask the ask our, our audience, uh, pull the audience. Maybe we should do that again, Matt. Pull the audience for. Uh, That's what I'll next. do. Okay. Yeah, we'll do one shape shifters. What's another one? Let, let yeah. you know, toss so, out some ideas. We're sitting here, everybody. Um, and real quick, I just want to give, give, uh, JR, JRB, my favorite Simpsons prediction. Tobacco. Tobacco, tobacco, and tomato crossbred plant. Mm -hmm. I, I do remember, I think that I'm almost. I remember that. that one. Yeah. So, um, just so that everybody, um, understands, we had done before a, a very, um, successful, uh, poll and the community chat of Planet 412. I'm going to do it again. So we're going to throw, you can only do four where the subjects, it only allows you to do four. So shape shifters is going to be one of them. We will allow you guys, whoever pops out three really good ones quick yeah. that you might want us to do a show about. I'll throw those in the poll over the next week. I'll do it tonight. Now, and now we'll Daniel... Is Daniel saying uh, golems? You know, he's asking about golems. Maybe that could be one, which is like homunculuses, which is our creatures that are cre yeah. creatures that are created. So, because uh, yeah, so Daniel says, how do we know these creatures aren't golems whose creators have died? Which is that is a big thing that is down here in Mexico, which is alushes. Uh, you know, it's just another thing like that. Mm -hmm. okay, add homunculus to the list, or just created creatures in general. Oh, shape shifting dogman in Paraguay. That's probably why I I didn't get dogman. So let me do that again. So you guys, you guys keep doing your thing, and I will. I think I just got I think I just got trolled by another furry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else has got some topics that we can throw in here? What's everybody want to hear? Okay. I, I, I'm I'm ready. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to share this, Matt. So, Matt, you ready to toss this one up? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, I think this is what he is talking about. Here we go. Let me know when it's up. It's up. Yep, it's up. All right, here we go. What was that? Can you possibly? Is that the biggest that can be? That's the biggest I can get it. Uh, hang okay. on, maybe I can. Maybe I can go like this. Hang on. No, no, that's the biggest I can get. Let's rewind that. There, I had, I did not get any. So, watching the window, <clears throat> and I'm gonna slow it down here. Let me just. Uh... Oh, Something's yeah. in there, and it just kind of goes down almost into a dog. Yeah, oh, whoa, what the heck was that? And then bro just that shoots almost, it. Wait, that almost looked like a shadow on the wall. Hold on, replay that. Yeah, right there, it's right there. That almost looked like a shadow. Maybe somebody is behind them, makes a shadow. And then a dog runs away and you can't see it, or there is something inside. So it goes into a dog. Yeah. I mean? It looks like a shadow on the glass. And he just shoots at he... it. He just fires at it, eh? I'm not certain that's a shot. real gunshot, to be honest. I think so. Go this person drives away a little bit. Time, Ryan. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let this play out, though, because there's, there's more to it, right? So I don't want to... Okay, okay. 
and then we can then I'll go back for sure. Okay, just replays it. Yeah, here we go. Huh. I don't I don't know. I need to see that on a bigger computer, actually. Rye, if you would when you're done, send me the link for that. Yeah, I will uh so the officer responded to a possible burglary burglar burglary break in and this is what the officer supposedly encountered. So let's see is that they, they put it in a, they inverse the I mean they they flip the I think, I think they're doing that to show that it the thing's inside, not outside. It's not a shadow, right? Because there's heat. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you see that arm thing? It's kind of like an inverted arm. This is very slender manish. I think almost like like uh the ring, you know, like how it yeah. starts yeah. crawling. Let's have a look here again. So it's up there. Truth Walker says is it sliding down that pole? I think it's sliding down the wall on the inside <laughs> of the building. Like it's up on like the now it's down on the ground. Yeah, I see right there the white. Ugh. Look at that. Like maybe like a pale crawler or something along that line too. Yeah. I don't know. You I don't know. Art Rye, I meant that, if you don't mind. Then they put a picture of me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go, Matt. So you can see it's right here. And Look there's this arm. This arm. That's bang, bang. so weird. That's not a natural way that a human no. arm ends. No. So if if that is a a you know fake video that they're faking it, they had because you could see the guy's reflection on the glass and the wall. They have a dog or something off camera just beyond him, so it makes it look like it runs inside, and then that's it. But it could be real. I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm not. I mean, I see. I do see what you're saying. But the way when they did the inverted there, uh, you can really see showed, that like, one arm. The, I, there, you, I mean, like you can't do that with your arm. Like you can't. <laughs> it doesn't work. No, it's I, agree. Mouth, I agree. It's mouth. Let's see. And a dog yeah. would never do that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I agree with Carol. It looks like a like rake. I, I'm on that one. A rake or a pale it's crawler. Or something else. Okay, let's go back to the poll, guys. We have a shapeshifter. How about three more real quick? Do you guys have any that you would like us to do? Do you want us to talk about the rake? Is that number two? I we'll, say we'll, I say throw that up there. I, the I just uh, That was my episode uh, that went on recently. Yeah. Two more, guys. Let's have uh, two other kind of cryptids or creatures that you guys would like us to... Uh, throw in the poll for the next week that we will discuss. Yeah, JRB that. says rake. So yes. Rake, so we got the rake. rake. The rake and shapeshifter. Okay, you give us two more, everyone. We get two more just in while we're waiting. Uh what water spirits is a good one. There's chupacabra. Chupacabra, the reptilian yeah. one. Okay. Ooh, we'll, we'll reptilians. On there. We'll throw that on there. And, and demons. demons. Okay, that's it. That's what we'll do. All right, Done. let me let me grab my pen huh. here. Mermaids yeah. possess dolls. Uh, well, we got those ones now, but it doesn't mean that we can't do these the next time or anything like that, right, guys? Right. And I right. have this, and I have this here all all written down. So I cannot use that. That's for my kind radio. Of piece so. of paper is that? It looks like, like you got scripture there in front of you. Well, Actually, if you'd like to know, when I do my radio show, hey, look at that. It's not normal paper. When to take my breaks when I when I take breaks for them. So I know mm. it exactly. Mm. Break number one. It has to be uh, six twelve point thirty p.m. I have to take break number one. So it's very specific. Mm. I can't use that. So I'll just put it in my phone real quick. 
Uh, and while we're doing that, let let's go, Rye. Uh, what can you let us know? What's on on up for Just, uh, for th Rye? this uh, Thursday? I want everybody to go check out my uh, episode that's dropping. That is with La Marzuli on the trail of the Nephilim. So if you're into Nephilim and anything like that, um, you know, this is an episode that is a must watch. I'm, you know, I'm thinking it's gonna be one of my big ones. Uh, so go check it out. You know, and make sure you guys like. And, and comment. I try to respond back to it. Well, not try to. I do respond back to every yeah, single comment. Yeah. So that, that's what I'd say for that. Also, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing, like this week for me is jam-packed. I got a ton of interviews coming up because I kind of took about a week and a half off. So I got to make up for that. I'm going to have some shorter interviews that I'm going to be dropping as well, only on YouTube, not on uh, audio. Yeah. And um, okay. Yeah, check out uh, youtube.com forward slash Sasquatchers. Uh, we have regular interviews. Uh, I think we're, we're weeks behind on interviews. We just had one with Susie Bastille come out about Pukwajis and um, Connecticut Triangles and other high strangeness. We have the weekly, I forgot the name of it, Far Out Folklore. Uh, that's that's just a couple, it's just a couple minutes. Like, that's all it is out of your day. And it's... Um, interesting just to learn about folklore from around the world right now i'm doing europe i'm eventually going to move to asia and that i have i have hundred of these planned i already have them on paper ready to go um and then on top of that uh we have a documentary check that out on the melon heads uh, the curse of kirtland ohio which is 10 minutes from my house here and um we're looking to, like I said earlier, we're rebranding. We have some cool stuff coming. Uh, so look forward to that in the next coming weeks. Fantastic. And then, uh, Matt, let's hear what On you got. Four twelve. I, I have to announce uh, every live stream. Uh, PRT is Planet 412's first sponsor. So Tuesday, 7 p.m. It's running on the bottom of the screen. Tuesday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central, one podcast. And YouTube Thursday, Blondes and Booze. Uh, Josh is on with them, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central. Friday from 8.30 to 11.30 p.m. Central guest Saturday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central. Alien Agenda, roundtable discussion Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Central. And on Fridays, uh, I am usually a guest co-hosting, and Rye has also been coming along when he can. Uh, also, you know, let everybody know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, any, uh, you know, uh, monies that are made in, in form of super chats or donations are going uh, to this Amazon link. There are things that a computer is going to be built by a person that is, is uh, a maker of computers or whatever you want to say. Um, and there is a microphone next month and arm that will be on the show because of the fine uh, donation. So if, you know, awesome. you guys could help out, we would appreciate it. The channel will get a hundred times better. Trust me when I tell you it will. I have huge things uh, getting ready to start, but I have to have a new computer for that to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, in terms of just what's going on, um, Aside from uh, some new videos popping out, I have, you know, regular format things coming up. I am finally, hopefully, going to be getting two uh, of these awesome interviews finished after over a month of working on them. Again, that's because of the computer I have. Uh, so those coming out. And then I also will have uh, Christopher Garitano on this Thursday on a live stream special Thursday edition at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christopher will be joining me on a live stream on Thursday. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, he's going to be discussing all of the amazing things uh, he's doing. You know, he is a, a TV producer and, and he is really rocking and kicking butt and taking names. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just going to be keep working and, and plugging away. And, uh, you know, we are every week going to be right here, all of us. And I want to finish with saying uh, thank you to everybody tonight who was in the in the chat. We apologize for people that came to do something. Sorry, else. you all got banned. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Jean. 
and I'll make sure there's nothing left over, but I don't think there's any problem anymore. Um, we could see everything that you said. And like I said, please email me. I'll get you taken care of with something. Uh, but on top of that, Drew, uh, if you're watching or he had messaged me during the show, he wasn't feeling well. If he's awake, Drew, brother, or when you watch us, we missed you. We love you, man. We hope everything is, is okay. We don't know, you know, what's going on, guys. He just was not feeling well tonight. So. Other than that, um, great show. Again, we're going to be doing a poll. Make sure you check out Planet 412's community post. I'm going to put it up later tonight with a poll about what we're going to decide. Again, it's either going to be the rake, shapeshifters, demons, or the reptile chupacabra. Yeah. So um, that's what we're going to do. And uh, thank you guys for, for being here. We really appreciate you. Anything else? I just want to say, yep. Yeah, thanks, everyone. I, you know, it's great. I, I really enjoy this, and I enjoy, you know, the comments. I love it that everyone is interacting with us, and I like it that it's interactive. I say it all the time. Tuesday is my favorite night of the week because of this. And I love it. with everyone. So, take care. God bless. Love you all. Absolutely. Again, thank you guys for coming. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on Thursday, hopefully. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel. I'll see you next time on Planet 412.